Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a video that I'm really excited about again. It, it seems like we're getting some very cool releases by round two these days. And this is an update to one of my favorite Star Trek model kits. This is an update to their 1 350th scale Katinga. This is the Kronos 1 version of the Katinga. Now, the 350th scale, these are big models. Uh, this model builds up to be about 24 inches long, and it's really made to be the adversary to the USS Enterprise. I think, obviously, there's a lot of builds out there of the 350th USS Enterprise refit. This is kind of the adversary companion to that model kit, and it is a very cool build. Now, here's the previous version of this model kit. This one was sold as the IKS Amar, and this is the Katinga featured as it was featured in Star Trek The Motion Picture. Of course, it was redone for later movies, specifically Star Trek VI, with all sorts of new adornment. And that's what the new model kit is all about. It's the updated version from Star Trek VI. Now, this year's release is an updated version of the Katinga with new parts to make it accurate for Star Trek VI, uh, lots of cool new decals, photo etch, and it's part of a suite of three different products. So we've got the model kit itself, then we also have a lighting kit that's available. Now this lighting kit will actually work on this version of the kit, and it will work on the previous version. So if you have the IKS Amar, if you've got the older version of the model kit, this lighting kit is compatible with that. And in a moment, when I, we take a look at the lighting that's done on my built up model from a few years ago, those are the lighting effects you can get with this official lighting kit. So we've got the model, we've got the light kit. There will also be a separate photo etch kit uh, now, I don't have a review copy of that photo etch kit. Um, I'm not sure if I'll get one, but I'm going to build up this model either way. But yeah, there's a separate photo etch kit as well. So model kit, lighting kit, once again, works on both versions of the Katinga model kit, the IKSMR or the Kronos 1, which is what we're looking at today. And there's also that photo etch kit. Now, the one thing that there is not, there is not a conversion kit to turn the old Katinga into the Kronos one. Uh, so no separate set with just the nacelles or just with the new different bridge. Uh, if you want the Kronos one, you do have to kind of pick up the entire new kit. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it and let's start looking at the 24 inch Klingon Katinga one an absolutely fantastic model kit being put out in a new updated form for 2023 by Polar Lights and Round 2. So in 2018, Round 2 and Polar Lights released this, the Klingon Katinga Battle Cruiser. This was actually the IKS Amar uh, from Star Trek The Motion Picture. And the Katinga is an updated Klingon Battle Cruiser based on the one in the original series, it has a very green color scheme and was featured a little bit in Star Trek The Motion Picture. Now, this is a very, very cool model kit. Uh, this one was molded in black, so you didn't have to light block it. The edges and the joints were beveled and dovetailed, so you don't need to putty. They light block things very easily. Lots of clear parts. And this one was made with the official lighting kit that came out at the time. Uh, very intricate paint job. All the different shades of green and washes. And I believe this is completely the recommended colors that they suggested uh, for that build. And one of my favorite things, hidden battery compartment. So we can turn on the lights. And of course, where I'm filming right now, the lights are kind of bright, so we may not be able to see all of this that well. All right, I've turned down the lights a little bit just so the lights can show up well on camera. And this is the official lighting kit that was out in 2018. And so many cool things I like about it. You can see we have 
a lit up photon torpedo launcher. You can see we have lights uh, going across the front. Hopefully you can see we do actually have some red windows right here along the bridge. You can see lights kind of behind that bulkhead. This is something I love so much. This LED that's kind of aimed through that slit to cast light across the wing of the hull. Uh, you got a little point of light up here. You get little lights across here for the engine lights and all of these little five points of light that's done with one clear part in this old kit and some very nice light piping. Along the back, you've got all the engines lit up, little red points of lights uh, there by the hangar bay. We have blinking lights. We have a lit up engine bay here. Once again, we have aimed lights here to wash across the hull. We have another strobing light down here on the bottom. And once again, I love so much about this model kit. I love these decals. I think there's like four decals here that make that just wonderful Klingon emblem across the bottom of the ship. All right, we're back to our full lights. You can still see, you can still see the lights when it's brightly lit, just maybe not quite as well. Yeah, this was such a cool model to build. And once again, some more very cool decals. Um, it took a little bit of Microsoft to get these to, to conform, uh, but that is just such a cool little look there, kind of that emblem by the torpedo launcher. Okay, it's kind of crazy. We're looking at a completed model before we even do our unboxing. But the model we're gonna unbox is going to be different from this. Now this model is the Klingon Katinga. Specifically, it is the Kronos One. Uh, this was featured in Star Trek VI, and it is the literal flagship. This is the Chancellor of the Klingon Empire's personal warship. So it features a different color scheme, but also when they made the movie, they put all sorts of photo etch on it. The idea was whenever a Klingon would win in battle, they would add an adornment to the ship. So when it got to Star Trek VI, it was covered in filigree and photo etch and all sorts of just little decorations. And of course you can see it has a much, much different paint scheme. It has golds, it has reds, it has tan. And the nacelles, this is another big change. These nacelles are different. The one we just looked at, you saw there were just like five points of light across at the very back of the nacelle. This version has green glow all along the inside. Uh, so we will be looking at the Klingon Kronos 1, 1 through 50 of scale model kit. We're also going to take a look at the official lighting kit for this model. All right, like always, starting with the box, we have the Klingon Katinga featuring golden battle honor adornments. We have gold chrome decals and photo etch parts in this box. Down here underneath, there are two supplemental things you can buy for this. The first is the lighting kit. We will be taking a look at that. The next one is the photo etch set, which has another 56 individual pieces. Uh, and you, if you look here, you can really see that's kind of all the adornments that we're talking about that got added on to the studio model when it came to shoot this movie. Um, I'm under the impression that if you don't get the photo etch kit, you'll just be using the chrome decals. I think that if you buy this, you won't need those chrome decals. You'll do, the, do it all with photo etch. Another cool shot of the ship. All right, and here's what we have in this box. You can see we do have a decal sheet of gold chrome. We have a traditional decal sheet, a little bit different, so it doesn't quite look like it has the same insignia on the bottom that I liked so much, but it still has uh, this one for the photo uh, torpedo launcher. Um, includes full color marking decals, as well as gold chrome service adornments, and it has select photo etch parts, so there will be some photo etch in this kit. As Polar Lights does so often, the inside of the box is our paint scheme and our decoration guide. 
So you can see tans, grays, golds, reds. I'm not sure if there's any green on this ship at all. Of course, the colors on this illustration will generally be exaggerated uh, so that you know where everything goes. Let's see, call outs for all the decals. There's that glowing inside nacelle. decals for the front, for the top, and just some recommendations about dry brushing, using model chalks and washing it. But definitely nice to get those full color guides for how you should paint the ship. Uh, I don't see any actual paint color recommendations on here, so that'll be up to us. But let's start looking at the plastic. Quick note, we do get a dome base. And we get the dome base that has the hollow rod. So even though you can set it up just with the battery pack inside it, if you do want to run wires out, uh, you've got a hollow rod that will facilitate that. All right, hold on a second, because once I got the plastic out, um, as I mentioned, Polar Lights in Round 2 like to use these inside box sides for the color placement guide and the painting guide, but I haven't seen them do this yet. This actually folds out to give you a larger illustration. And there are my color guides um, to Maya paint equivalents. So brown, tan, rose red, off-white, dark gray, medium gray, light gray. So yes, we do actually get some full color direction here. There we go. And that means over on this side, We get some more very nice full illustrations and pictures of what everything should look like. All right, so here's a look at the photo etch that actually comes in the kit itself. So not too much, but looks like some important parts. So yeah, it looks it's about the size of a credit card, this piece of photo etch. And I believe this is showing us what you get. We get some adornments for the bridge. Yeah, looks like we get a lot of bridge photo etch here. Looks like we get photo etch for the neck of the ship. It looks like the rest of this will probably do with gold decals. Yeah, and it looks like some photo etch to put on the underneath side of the neck. All right, here is our decal sheet. It looks like it's about three inches by eight inches, but some cool insignia, a couple different markings there, a more subdued decal for that photo launcher, and looks like some decals to go over the photo etch for the windows. But yeah, looks like a nice little set. All right, and here is uh, the important decal set, gold chrome, hard to get the actual color here, um, it's just looking, it's looking mostly black and gray on camera, uh, but it really is gold. And if I catch the light right on it, you can see it, but very intricate. And looks like this will just, if you're not buying this separate photo etch set, this will provide all those kind of gold, uh, markings across the ship. So yeah, yeah. If, if I catch the light, right, the camera, um, will show you how gold they are. Um, yeah, very nice gold chrome decal set there. All right, here we are looking at the actual plastic. And just like the previous release, it is once again molded in black. And yes, my, my paint budget definitely thanks Polar Lights for this. Because uh, yeah, you know, no need to light block it. Uh, with my strong LED behind here, you can see light does not shine through. You do not need to light block this kit. Um, one thing I think I could have done better last time is I think I used silver to help diffuse the light. Uh, that's something I've regretted ever since. This time I will do some white across the inside. I think that will make my lights much, much brighter than they were before. Uh, but this just already done in black is fantastic. And I hope you can see the other thing I've been talking about, that this kit has some built-in light blocking behind the scenes, behind the seams. So you can see these raised edges 
this extra corner here across the top you can kind of see how it's beveled all of those are designed to block the light without having to do extra putty so you can see here this raised lip and these raised 45 degree angle parts all fit together to help you block light uh, this is a really good view here you can see how it's just raised up and how it's beveled uh, to really fit together yeah all of these little seams have this they just have this extra little dovetail so that when they fit together there's an extra layer there to prevent any light from fitting through on those cracks uh, here's kind of the inside of that battery component or that battery uh, section and then my favorite thing about this kit is how the neck holds on um, so you can see these two parts will fit together and there's going to be a hole here for the neck. We'll look at that in a moment. Uh, but once again, molded in black, wonderful detail across the entire kit. Uh, like I said, this is probably one of their, this is probably one of the best engineered Star Trek model kits out there. Uh, it's very recent and it's incredibly well done. Just if you look at that detail, you can see just how fine these windows are and this is a fairly unique piece because it looks straight here when we take it off and build the kit this will actually get curved uh, to fit where it needs to fit but just tons of little parts little bits of detail and i think we're gonna have to go get my other kit to kind of see what's different here all right so it looks like everything on these two sprues is the same as it was on the original release but this looks like all new parts lots of extra little greeblies and i believe this has got to be for the nacelles extra detailing on the nacelles uh, for that upgraded version of the katinga and it looks like uh, this must be part of the bridge So yeah, we'll, we'll find out where all these go um, as we build it. But yeah, just take a look at that cool little part that's going to go around the nacelles. All right. It also looks like we have a lot of new parts here. Uh, so let's take a look. So here is a side piece. And you can see it has all of this cool mechanical detail across the front. On the old kit, um, it was just kind of the grooved lines all the way across. So this part will now look like this on the Kronos one. Uh, get a good look at this back engine deck and you can see uh, the detailing that is here and across. Let's look at the engine deck as it was on the IKS MR. So you can see all of these grooved lines and you can kind of see the differences there this part looks like it is done differently here so once again uh it just pretty much has these two details here here's our new kit piece where you can see all of this detail has been added on so this We'll replace this part. Looks like we have slightly different engine housings. Um, I'm going to have to check. This might be down uh, where that wonderful trifoil Klingon emblem was before. And of course, here are our new nacelles. Completely redone. Opened up so they can be lit. Looks like you've got room for lights on both sides. Yeah, very nice. It's going to be cool to see these lit up and glowing green. Now, this model kit really is so strong that you can hold it by the neck and it can support the weight because of the way it's constructed. And I kind of mentioned how the two hole parts fit together and leave that hole for the neck. The neck has these locking tabs here. So when you 
push this through those parts, those locking tabs will lock those two parts of the hole together and hold themselves together. Uh, it really is cool. I, you'll see it when I build it, uh, but it's a very neat way that it's done and it makes it super strong. And while we're looking here, just take a look at all of that wonderful molded in detail on these kit pieces. And especially look at these, because I think these pieces are replaced on the next sprue we're going to look at. All right, so these clear parts are all the parts that were included the first time around on the kit. So we've got uh, clear parts for the engines, clear parts for that orange glowing grill across the front. These are my favorite parts. These are those light pipes that light up all five points of light on those nacelles. You stick one LED in here and it lights up this point and it lights up, it'll light up these four posts on both sides. So one LED, five points of light. That is such a cool design. I just love it. Now these are the new clear parts for the Katinga. So first thing you see, those parts that I mentioned, those are replaced by clear parts on this build. Uh, looks like those parts that I love, they look like they're changed because you don't light the points on the side anymore like that. Um, looks like we'll just have like one point of light on the side and one out the back. And you get these. These will be the clear parts that glow green um, on those nacelles. And look, our engine lights now, well, I thought they were replacements for these. Um, I'll have to check what these are. Uh, but if these are for the engines, they are no longer clear. They are now uh, dimpled and rough to provide kind of a different light, the same way the nacelles are. So some very cool uh, new clear parts. And it looks like instead of opaque pieces here, we will have lit up green ones here um, with those clear parts. Yeah, I, I, you know, I really can't hide it. I think this is a fantastic model kit. I thought it was fantastic before, and now it's been upgraded to be the version from my favorite Star Trek movie. Wonderful additions to the kit. Um, I'm a big fan. I, I know I'm gonna enjoy this build because I've pretty much built this model before, but I'm excited to kind of tackle it in this new flavor. Um, and, I, as I kind of mentioned when I was talking about the Millennium Falcon, I feel this is kind of the right price point for an epic model kit. Um, I think the model kit itself is about 125. I think when you get the model kit and the light kit, you're right around 200. I feel that's a fine price point for a model that's going to be this epic and well built and have a light kit included in that price. I feel this is kind of the upper reaches of that price point, but I'm fine with it. Um, if you watched my countdown of what I thought the best Star Trek model kits were, this one was number two. And the only reason it wasn't number one, besides it not being an Enterprise, it was affordability. I had to give it to the Discovery Enterprise because that one has engineering that's almost as good as this. It's planned out for lighting as much, but it's much, much more affordable. Uh, but for a 350th scale ship, I feel this is a fair price and it is probably the best engineered Star Trek model kit out there. I just absolutely love it and I can't wait to start building it. Uh, we do still have to take a look at the light kit. I will do a separate video about that to kind of go over what's in that light kit. And then as I build this model kit, uh, we'll put all of them together so you can really see how it works. Uh, it's very nice to have an officially made lighting kit for a model. So, well, if you saw my Millennium Falcon video, you saw how when I do it myself, it ends up a jumbled mess of spaghetti wires. Uh, this is a lot more elegant when you get a professionally made lighting kit. So <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of videos about this kit. Um, and I'm excited to do it for us. So thank you to Polar Lights and thank you to Round 2 for letting me work on this review kit. Um, I very much appreciate it. Thank you to everybody on AllScaleTrek.com forums. Thank you to everybody here on YouTube for following the channel. 
stick with it. This is going to be a very cool build. And if you haven't seen the 350th scale Katinga built up before, it really is a cool build. And I'll be showing it all here on the channel. And I'll be back soon.